We'll, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, we're waiting on a, a substitute. Um, but we have th three more that uh, we need to have presented. Um, I'm going to ask Ch Chairman Green if he'll open us with prayer. Push your, push your button, please, sir. Let us pray. Father, once again we come to thee in prayer. We humble ourselves before thee, knowing, Father, that thou art the one that makes everything. You are the creator of all things good. And, Father, we just pray as we move toward the close of this session that we will make the right decisions for the people of the state of Georgia. Bless us now, Father. Go with us and guide us and direct us in all things. In thy holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, sir. Um, just as a, uh, a side note, if, if things get a little hectic tomorrow, just stand back and take a deep breath and say, I'm ready. Just take a deep breath. Okay. All right. I understand the new substitute is in, so or being handed out, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, Chairman Estration, he has a substitute for Senate Bill 201. The LC number is 432051S. If you'll push your button, sir. Okay, if you will explain your substitute. Okay, great. All right, try it now. Okay, button pushed. Okay, now it is. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Rules Committee. The uh, proposed rule substitute to Senate Bill 201, similar to what I described to you yesterday. Section 1 of the bill is a Department of Revenue bill that's unchanged. Section 2 of the bill would uh, provide specific to Gwinnett and Fulton counties that the tax commissioner of those counties is responsible for the cl collection of taxes as contracted by the counties with cities and that the county would set the, uh, would set the pay of the tax commissioner. Uh, this was originally brought to my attention because a Democrat county commissioner in Gwinnett County issued a press release expressing concern that the newly elected tax commissioner was proposing substantial increase to the taxes that are collected in municipalities in Gwinnett County. And uh, due to the fact we're late in session right now, this bill is drawn very narrowly to only apply to Gwinnett and Fulton. We appreciate your favorable consideration. Okay. Uh Procedures, we need to vote on Senate Bill 201, substitute LC 432051S. <coughs> I hear a move. Got a move and a second. All in favor say aye. <coughs> Not opposed, like sign. It passed. All right. Senate Bill 46, substitute LC 338828S. And I understand Whip Kelly is going to present that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the committee, I bring before you LC 338828S. Uh, this is an important measure uh, that uh, will allow us to continue um, having access to the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, but what we also included is two House measures that passed uh, this body already that just kind of got tangled up uh, in the Senate. Uh, House Bill 450, which deals with uh, some research for cannabis oil uh, research, and uh, House Bill 275 that dealt with firefighters and helping uh, us get more EMTs in our state. They, both of those passed overwhelmingly in the House, and so we're just attaching them to this good, important Senate measure uh, to make sure they get the attention they deserve, Mr. Chairman. Okay, you got a couple questions. Chairman Taylor. Well, why isn't that side of the room working? Let's try it now. No. Nope. I try. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A couple questions. Um, does this, when we're talking about the um, injections, for some reason they've left out nurse practitioner. I guess it would be on um, line 310 when they define a nurse. 
and they never go back and add nurse practitioner. I'm wondering if that needs to be included. And I still have a little heartburn over um, this information. Is it going to be able to be given out, and you have to opt out, or did we change that? I'll be glad to speak to this, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, and if I don't do it uh, justice, I'll let uh, Chair Lady Cooper uh, tag team with me on this. But let, let me let me start by saying this first: uh, line three ten through three thirteen. That's not new language. Uh, so the definition of nurse right there, that's existing uh, existing code, and I can't speak to why a nurse practitioner wasn't put in there, but nothing has changed on, on those lines of the, of the measure. My understanding uh, in, in regards to um, the, the information is uh, currently this information is being shared for every vaccine outside of the COVID-19 vaccine, and we're simply making clear that the same information that's currently shared uh, for other vaccines will be uh, shared for the uh, COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, that is that is my understanding of the measure. Um, but if, if Chair Lady Cooper wants to help help with that as well, I'll be glad to let her explain it since she's worked more on this measure than I have. Thank uh, you. Chairman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's a little bit different, Mr. Webb. Uh, on this information, that we have to share it with some information with the CDC in order to get more vaccines. The amount of vaccines that we get going forward is based on the number of injections that are given out. But the information will have no traceable or identifiable information sent. There will be no name, no address. They're going to send a birth date and a zip code and that kind of thing, but it will not be identifiable to the person. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Williamson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and to the author of the bill, just following up what Chairman Cooper said on line six, it just, and I just wanted to put an exclamation point on that. It states, in part, to authorize the Department of Public Health to, to release de identified data from the low TH oil patient registry, as well as, um, so this de identified data is what's going. Uh, as, as well about the vaccines to the Department of Public Health. Is that not correct? Yes, I think so. Right. Thank okay, you. Chairman Knight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just, uh, uh, I guess, a, a follow-up question to, the, to uh, Chair Lady Cooper, but it, it, isn't it not true in addition to what she had said that uh, Senate Bill 46 um, is actually a little bit stricter than HIPAA uh, from a perspective of it, 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 the names cannot be provided uh, uh, when the information is shared. So the patient's names cannot be provided. So, and I'm, I'm looking, I was out on a, uh, it was line 62 of, of the last version that came out, but that was on line 62. Uh, and that's actually what it did. It actually made it stricter than HIPAA. So isn't this, uh, again, it has more, con more stricter provisions than HIPAA. Uh, and that the information that we uh, are receiving from the outside is not reading the bill. They're simply just not reading the bill. The, the, fact, the fact that uh, it does prohibit names being shared would make it a stricter requirement than HIPAA. Uh, we've, we've, we've tried to work very carefully on that. That was an addition that we made over here uh, to help address some of those privacy concerns, but it does expressly prohibit the name uh, being used, uh, but they are collecting some important uh, data regarding uh, the age of the individual, you know, the, the, the zip code of the individual, the, which arm they got, which type of vaccine they got, things that will help us continue to, to plan and prepare, uh, not just for this uh, pandemic, but for any future ones. Okay, I see no more questions. So I guess time now is to, Whip Kelly, do I hear a move on set, substitute LC 338828S? A move. Got a move and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed like sign. It passed. All right, next in order, Senate Bill 204 by Chairman Martin. It's LC 490562S. Okay. 
Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, th this simply was a formatting error on page seven. Uh, what used to be uh, subsection F is now E. There, there was just, it was a typo in, in the bill. So it's just <laughs> renumbering those paragraphs, not a word in the bill otherwise changed from the bill that uh, we put on the floor yesterday. Okay. Well, I uh, see no questions there. I hear a motion, Chairman Martin. Got a move to do passed. I hear a second. All in favor say aye. All opposed like sign. It passed. All right. Chairman Powell, I understand you have a substitute for Senate Bill 219 with an LC number of 364852S. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a uh, sort of a cleanup bill for the alcohol. Hold industry. on a second. Let me do this thing again. Uh, now try it. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the committee. Uh, this is an annual cleanup bill for some of our alcohol issues in the state. Section 1 uh, last year, and I know it was hard to believe that uh, Chairman Harrell will know we made a mistake on the home delivery last year, but it was opt-in and not opt-out. So over the last year, what's happened is a lot of the jurisdictions has been allowing uh, home delivery of alcohol needs to be reversed so that if a local jurisdiction doesn't want to allow it so they can pass a resolution so that cleans that part up section two deals with a uh, bill that came out of the senate that was brought to us by the restaurant association trying to help a lot of our restaurants during this pandemic time a lot of them are scrambling for everything they can to do re make revenue and this would allow them to sell two mixed drinks uh, secured cups, taped, and that kind of stuff, uh, and basically if tracks of Merlot to go rules, that it had to be stored out of the out of the hand sight or the out of the reach, either in a compartment or in the trunk of the car, the same way the Merlot to go is. Uh, this is something that's been asked for by the restaurant industry. Um, best I can tell you is just you know if you order food, you can order two drinks to go. And I'm guessing this would be for the uh, flowery drinkers who drink margaritas and stuff like that, not the straight whiskey drinkers. Uh, section three, uh, this is to clarify some language that deals with our distilleries. We have a situation right now that you would think that a distillery, they make liquor. But what we've got is a situation in the state now where some of the folks are getting distillery licenses so they can then have up to three locations to sell. They're bringing in and buying volumes of the grain product and then through their rickhouse process or blending process, then they're actually doing the blending and the cutting and the, uh, and the type of things that you do with liquor. But they're not actually making that liquor. They're buying it by volume out of Florida and places like that in tanker trucks. This gives a clear definition that if you're going to be called a distillery, you've got to have a dis you've got to have a, a distilling operation. It doesn't stop you from importing the grain and uh, the grain substances somewhere else, but you've still got to have a distillery to call yourself a, a Georgia distillery, something that uh, makes that produces jobs and uses Georgia products. Uh, I compare it sort of like uh, apple brandy that's made by one of them up in. Uh, up in Gilmer County. You know, they use the apples up there and they make a product and they've got people that, uh, that actually work and employ and that's what, that, that's what that section does. And then last but not least, section 14, uh, this deals with the issue of our breweries. Uh, this would allow a brewery that if there's multiple breweries that's owned 100% by the same company, that they could transfer their product. Uh, one of these case in point would be a brewery that has two breweries in the same town, uh, but they don't make the same brand. And you know, these beer drinkers, they're so picky about their taste, almost as bad as wine drinkers, but that way they can transfer between the breweries their product. And that, Mr. Chairman, is what this bill does. Okay, we, Chairman Fleming. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman Powell, I appreciate your explanation of that. And 
as I have um, tried to understand the bill and ask questions of people that are for it and against it, section, uh, I guess it's the first section two on page three, lines 53 through 57, that is, that's what my question is about. I understand that for a long time, local governments haven't allowed people to take alcohol off premises when they're an, uh, in a cup, in a glass. And last year, because of the pandemic, we did an opt in. In other words, if you wanted to allow that because people ordered so many meals, you could allow them to take their drinks with them too. But now, as I understand it, we're gonna change that to an opt out. So in right. other words, that will be the law everywhere unless you pass a local ordinance saying it's not. My initial concern was that we would be changing so many local laws in so many towns and counties by doing that. And, and that became the discussion yesterday that, well, are we or are we not? And I don't know if you can comment on the number of counties and cities we would be changing their law by passing this. I, no, sir, I can't. That is the opt-out provision that puts it in sync with the home delivery. Uh, we're trying to put all, try to get to all of these laws in sync with each other, but this would be an opt, this would be an opt-out provision, uh, so that if a local jurisdiction did not want to permit uh, mixed drinks to go, then that simply they could pass a resolution saying we do not permit this. And I don't know how many that, well, this this won't affect any of them because this isn't legal right now. This actually goes into effect. I mean, they don't have, you can't sell mixed drinks to go right now. So this wouldn't have any effect on any local government as of right now. Then at this point, if this passes, then it would go forward and then they would have to opt out if they don't want to allow this practice for their restaurants. If I may, one follow up. If this is not the current law that you can pass an ordinance to allow for mixed drinks to go, when you said in your initial explanation that we made it an opt in and now we're gonna make it an opt out, maybe I misunderstood what you were talking about. Now on section one last year when we did the uh, home delivery yes, sir. of alcohol, it was opt in instead of opt out. And we're changing this now to opt out because most jurisdictions is what we've learned is that most of them thought that that was the law and then people were, they were allowing the delivery but yet they had not done the, the, the resolution. So it was decided with the help of uh, the, the uh, governing authorities groups that to do an opt out provision. So what you're saying, if I may, the first time we have ever allowed people to take mixed drinks to go will be right now in this bill. In this bill, this would allow mixed drinks to go with a food order. But if the local government doesn't want it, then they pass a resolution saying that we're opposed to this and we won't permit it in our jurisdiction. Well, my last question for clarification purposes is, does the current law of Georgia allow for mixed drinks to go? And if so, how are we changing it? That's what we're doing with this bill. So does current law allow it or not? It does not allow it. Okay, thank you. Chair, La Chair Lady Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A question. Um, if you have a county that has no pouring license, they don't pour at all and sell alcohol in restaurants, will this affect them? Would you explain they would, that again? They could order you, you drinks to go even though they don't serve it in the restaurant. If you have a county that doesn't serve it, then, then the liquor is not legal. So then it wouldn't be applicable. This, is all, this only affects counties that have legal sales. Okay. Whip Wilkerson, let me find a button for you. Go ahead. Okay. Try another microphone. There you go. There we go. Thank you. I guess to follow up on that question, if you are in a county adjacent to one that is dry, um, will they be able to call the restaurant in the adjacent county and bring it over to you? No. Okay. The alcohol to go was for retail sales, the bill that passed last year. This is for restaurant sales. You have to pick up your own food. No, it's not delivery. 
Any other questions? Uh, let me turn off about 10, 12 buttons here. Trying to find one while I go that worked for him. Okay, so we've got Senate Bill, Senate Bill 219, substitute LC 3648-52-S. Do I hear a motion, Mr. Powell? Move. Move. We got a move and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. It passed. All right. Okay, now, now we're going to set the calendar for day 40 tomorrow. <clears throat> this, this, this first one, I, I still wish we could change the name on who the state nut is, but under modified open, Senate Bill 222, do I hear a move? Got a move and a second, it's on. Under modified structure, Senate Bill 27, and it has to do with uh, stand the time a member of the military has to qualify for the issuance of a license. There you move. Got a move and a second, it's on. Senate Bill 46, it, it, uh, the rule substitute just passed, it's LC 338828S. Do I hear a move? Got a move and a second, it's on. Senate Bill 204, rule substitute LC 490562S. Do I hear a move? Got a move and a second, it's on. Senate Bill 219, LC 364852S, substitute that just passed. Do I hear a move? Got a move and a second, it's on. Senate Bill 237, do I hear a move? Got a move and a second. All in favor say aye. All opposed, like sign. It's on. Uh, Senate Bill 256. Do I hear a move? move? Got a move and a second. It's on. Understructured. Senate Bill 201. Do I hear a move? move. Got a move and a second. All in favor say aye. All opposed, like sign. It's on. That is the calendar for tomorrow. Let me run through them one more time. Senate Bill 222, Senate Bill 27, Senate Bill 46 as a rule substitute, uh, LC 338828S, Senate Bill 204 as a rule substitute, 490562S, Senate Bill 219, LC 364852S as a rule substitute, Senate Bill 237, Senate Bill 256, Senate Bill 201. And we have a motion from the chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that pursuant to Rule 33.3 .3, that debate be limited to no more than one hour on all bills on all calendars. Tomorrow, time to be allocated at the discretion of the speaker. Yeah, a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. All opposed, like sign. It's on. Okay, before we go, I want to be sure that on else on rules for Senate Bill 201, the rule substitute that we passed a few minutes ago, LC 432051S is the version. It's the rule substitute. Thank y'all.